Chris, thank you. So, um, like I was saying to you before we went live on air, I was just wondering why you are, are getting into a bank when you are an agricultural company. Tell me about the fit. Yes, Afcra at the moment manages a data book uh, for third parties of about 15 billion dollars, oh 15 billion rand. So it's important for us uh, to try and link that up to, uh, to other products that we can offer our customer base. So for us it was really a focus of ensuring that we have a full suite of uh, product offerings, banking products included to, to yeah. our customer base. So what are you getting? We're getting a full banking license, we're right. getting a good management Big price. team, a good price. Uh, good management team, uh, good infrastructure, okay. and uh, and hopefully something that we that we can grow. What's the size of the chunk that you're getting? We're acquiring 99.81 percent. Oh, you're acquiring so the whole thing. We're acquiring the whole thing, absolutely. <laughs> Not ourselves. Uh, obviously, sure. we're doing that in conjunction with uh, two of our current shareholders, uh, PIC and also Fairfax Africa Holdings. Okay. Uh, so it's good to have them alongside us in that position. Okay. So you get this license. What do you do with it? Uh, what we want to do is we, we believe there's a gap in the market for a positioned uh, industry bank. In other words, uh, a bank uh -huh. that focuses primarily on uh, food and agriculture. Okay, so you're uh, going to use this license to lend to the food and agriculture sector. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we want to expand into specifically the industry, not necessarily uh, compete on other parts of right. retail banking or corporate banking, but yeah. primarily into the space that we know. Um, and I think that's the focus for us. Obviously, realizing there's a current customer base that we need to look after and be sensitive to, and that we will do. Absolutely. And they are thinking maybe competition is finally going to get even hotter than it has uh, been getting with the big four and mm -hmm. also discovery coming in. But you are going after the farmers and uh, the food processors. I also wanted to understand, in terms of uh, the focus uh, for this business, well how different will it be from the lead bank? Because the lead bank has indeed been the player in the agriculture yes, sector, has yes. it? We hope that it will be a support based to Land Bank. Uh, we Land Bank is a very key and very important stakeholder for us as a group uh, right. and also in terms of our lending operations. So, so we hope to take Land Bank from the first day, which actually started in middle of 2016, that we had this idea of uh, expanding into the banking environment. Right. Uh, we kept Land Bank updated. So, um, okay. as a partner, we hope to take them along on a journey and, and also have a good relationship between the commercial license and also what they can offer from, from uh, the but land but bank But side. with them competing with you or you competing with them now, surely at some point there has to be uh, a yeah. parting of ways. Uh, not necessarily, because the products that we can offer and that we try to link into our current di digital platform uh, on the Africa Group side are products that we can offer to their customers, yeah. uh, customers as well in future. Yeah. Um, so we actually see a big partnership uh, expanding into this uh, into the banking products that uh, that they all as don't have at this yeah. point in time. How big a business is this uh, Bank of Athens? It's not that big. I'm it's uh, currently, I think the balance sheet is about uh, just under two billion. So it's not okay. a it's not a big bank. It's okay. uh, but it's a well established bank, and it's a it's a, um, you know it's sustainable uh, in its current in its current format. And they have a v they have a couple of very strong products that we hope to expand on. Right. Um, so while you're here, Chris, we're going to talk about the big topic <laughs> when we talk about <laughs> land and we talk about yes. farming and we talk about yes. your business, Afgri. You're getting into a space where you're yeah. going to have to lend to people whose land may come under a new law, which yeah. new law suggests expropriation of land by the state without compensation. Yes. Surely that's going to be a big problem. I think you know, the approach we've taken is that uh, Africa in general is, you know, we see the, the laws are full most of the time. And I sure. think in this instance, we actually believe this is a good process that, we, uh, that, uh, that the president embarked on. Just purely from the sense that we believe you need to talk about, land needs to be talked about. It needs to be understood. It needs to be, uh, there should be an understanding amongst all people in South Africa of what land means and what the basis and the security of land means. Yeah. Uh, the ANC has made it quite clear from day one that they will do it in a manner that is not negative to food security or yes. to the econo economy. Yeah. Uh, and we need to obviously trust them in that process. I must say in the discussions that I've been involved, uh, over the last eight months, it's it's not necessarily negative. I think there's a uh, there's a huge amount of goodwill from uh, farmers to to look at something new. Uh, yeah. This is something that we need to be part of. We need to be part of changing uh, South Africa, and I strongly believe uh, being part and participating in the process uh, is probably helping more than uh, than uh, than not uh, not helping in the sense of being negative. Let me tell you my thoughts. I, I, I've been thinking, Cyril could have gone about this in a different way without using the words expropriation, without compensation. Because yeah. if you listen to the discourse, everybody says, of course we are for land reform, but 
-hmm. When you take without compensation, mm -hmm. you are stepping outside the realm of the law. And yeah. it's just my thought that perhaps this could have been better worded, no? Could have been better worded, but I think it, that was the uh, political issue at the time, and still is, because I think that everybody in South Africa, a lot of a big part of the uh, of the population in South Africa, are looking towards compensation without the, uh, or expropriation. Without almost like retribution, you almost. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's uh, you know call it what it is, and yeah. be open about it. Yeah. And exactly I'm being very frank uh, about it. Yeah, yeah. and I, th I, I I agree. I think that's probably the approach that the president has taken. Is sure. let's call it what it is. You know, people are talking about it, and let's see what we can do about it. What are your pharma customers saying? Thinking. I think most of the pharma customers are obviously scared. You know, there's a yeah. lot of it brings uh, with it a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. Um, and you know, f I can only say that from my experience and what I've experienced over the last uh, over the last eight months is not necessarily th that negative. I think yeah. there's a a, po a positive approach if we can get to a point where uh, land tenure can can be understood, where security of ownership can be understood. And once this is uh, you gone through this process and yeah. farmer has security of land ownership, yeah. it will be a good basis to work from. Yeah, um, you've been four years. I'm going to call it the wilderness. When are you coming <laughs> back <laughs> to the JSE? Uh, we, we, we delisted <laughs> for a reason and uh, no intention to come back to the JSE at this point. Oh, did you just say no intention? <laughs> no intention at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, the CEO of uh, Africa, Chris Vendor. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Appreciate it.